Hello, Joyce and Anthony, aka JJ here. And this is a study that I was kind of curious about. It's between the tint tool and vertex paint. I used both multiple times last year and I just wanted to see what's really the difference because they're extremely similar. So the tint tool, if you're in the grease pencil, it's the fourth tool down from the brush. And what both these tools have, like it automatically goes to stroke and fill, but I'm just playing around. So I know the, if you do a stroke, it's only going to do like the line, if that makes sense. Like if you look on the right, all I had selected when I used that brush was the, sorry, the stroke. And then the second one is just fill. So the only thing that will fill, see if I try to go over the tint and won't work, it's only the fill. So now if you do stroke and fill, it's kind of like the best of both worlds it will color the stroke and the fill. So now I'm gonna go to vertex paint. So what I notice is vertex paint, it's similar to the tint tool, but it has a lot more options. And I'll get to that in just a second. So again, I'm going over the stroke, the, the different options, stroke, fill, and stroke and fill. Okay, what I meant about more options is if you're in vertex paint and you look at the top, you click selection mask. Well, that will do is if I go into edit mode or just I use box select and I just want to just want to paint selected stroke points like the points at the top of the T, it will just select the bot. So it will just select the top of the T. Second option is the selected stroke. So. I'm gonna just use the box select and select the, the whole E so it selects the stroke. If I wanted to be more specific, like maybe I just wanted the top part of the T, I would use the previous one, which it selects points. The last selection mask only paints selected stroke points between other strokes. The last option is multi-frame. So pretend like I wanted to make an animation and I wanted the E to be selected in every animation, I would click multi-frame and it would color in, it would make the changes to every single frame. So I wouldn't have to go in each and individual frame to change. In blur, so again, like on the left side, there's more options to play around with the colors in vertex paint. There's blur, there's average, smear, and replace. Average paints stroke points with a color. Smear also paints a stroke point with a color. Like if you ever use Photoshop or Procreate and you want to kind of like smudge, I kind of, I call it smudge, but that's, it's like helpful to smudge a color out. And the last option is replace, kind of like what the name suggests. If I wanted to, I didn't like the, you know, the orange anymore and I wanted to use a, a yellow, I would just select replace and it would replace it with the new color that I've selected. And this is more of a headshot study. So if I ever use tint or vertex paint, I would more than likely use it for like something like this, a headshot study where I started off with two flat headshots. So like flat means like there's no shadows or highlights. And on the left side, I'm going in with the tint tool and I'm experimenting with that, seeing how it comes out. And then on the right side, I'm going to use vertex paint to see, you know, again, how, how it works. I wanna see if there's really any difference. So the remaining video is just a time lapse and I hope you learned something new about the tint tool in Vertex Paint. This is Joyce and Anthony, AKA JJ. Until next time.